So for the past few months, I've been using a fog machine for some of my product ad work. And as you can see, you can get some really cool shots using a fog machine. However, the secret to getting these shots is not just the fog machine. It's actually the contraption that I made for it, which I'm calling the Fogmaster 3.0. The reason why the Fogmaster 3.0 is so important is that it gives me controlled output of the fog. So I can direct it where I want to, kind of lead it around the room or across the product or whatever it is that I'm doing. And here you can see the difference from the output of just the fog machine and then with the Fogmaster 3.0. The reason the Fogmaster 3.0 is so important is that yes, it evenly and easily distributes the fog, but also prevents damage to the machine itself. You don't wanna take the machine and kind of point it all over the place or point it up or down or anything crazy like that. It has to be on a flat surface because the elements inside are heating the fog juice. And if there's no fog juice for it to heat, you risk burning out the elements and or the machine parts itself. Obviously not something we want. So this build is really important and I'm going to share it with you so you can get some ideas on how you might be able to build your own and or just copy the one that I did. And I'll just link everything down in the description so that you can easily find it yourself. But I sourced pretty much all of these parts from Home Depot. The first item is a 10 foot vinyl clear tubing. The one I used has a 5 8 inch inner diameter. I also got a 10 foot long braided vinyl tubing of the same exact dimensions and you'll see why I use that later. The next item is a 5 8 to 5 8 inch brass splicer. Then you'll need a variety of rubber bands of different thicknesses and strengths and then optionally you can get the 5 8 inch nylon adapter fitting. The first thing we do is take our 10 foot clear vinyl tubing and push the brass adapter into it. Next, cut off a chunk of the braided vinyl tubing, cut one side in half, and stretch it around where the brass adapter and the vinyl tubing are connecting. Then take one of your rubber bands and just fasten that nice and tight. Next, I took some other rubber bands, attached them together to get the right stretch amount, wrap them around the hose and adapter fitting, then take the whole contraption, pressing the splicer into the exit hole of the fog machine while using the rubber bands that you attach to wrap around the sides and hold onto the knobs on the side of the fog machine. And basically that is it. The fog will come straight out of the exit hole hole right through the brass splicer through the vinyl tubing and onto wherever you're pointing the other end of the tube. It's really important not to touch the splicer or the front of the fog machine while it's in use or after just finishing using it because it gets really hot and you could burn yourself. It's also why I use the brass splicer because it keeps it so that it's heat resistant and doesn't melt the vinyl tubing. This is also why I use the braided vinyl tubing on top of the clear vinyl tubing because it needed that extra protection against the heat for the rubber bands and and also to keep it so that the clear vinyl tubing doesn't just slip off of the brass splicer. You might be wondering why didn't I use then just the braided vinyl tubing for the whole thing? The reason is it's a much more strong tube and it's not as easily bendable. I wanted some bend in my tube so that I could easily manipulate it versus having to struggle with it and having it constantly slip off of the fog machine. As it is, this build is not completely perfect. There are times that if you try to move too far to the left or right with the tube, it will bump the splicer out of the whole because it's not a perfect snug fit. And that's why this is the 3.0 version. The mistakes for the 1 and 2.0 were that I thought it was better to try to capture all of the fog coming out and use kind of a nozzle or a funnel system to direct it down into the hose. On the first iteration, I thought I could use an actual funnel and that one didn't really work. So I didn't count that one as a 1.0. The second iteration used a laundry soap cap with a hole in it for the tube attached to the PVC end pipe, which then was rubber banded around the entire exit hole of the fog machine. The problem with this one was that the plastic on the laundry cap was too thin and was melting because of the heat coming out of the fog machine. Basically, it's really hot steam if you wanna think about it that way. So whatever plastic you're using, it's getting wet and also hot. Two combinations that are not super helpful. So then I bought more PVC pipe end caps, drilled more holes, and thought I'll just attach the tube right to that, which did actually work for a few times until the adhesion I was using, which in hindsight was probably not water resistant completely, ended up separating and the tube would just fall out. So that was version 2.0 that failed me right in the middle of a shoot and I was getting really frustrated. So I thought I'll just try to jam it into the hole with this brass splicer and just see if it works from there. And that's where 3.0 was kind of created. 
So as you can see, mistakes were made and costly mistakes at that. I spent at least 50 to $100 on parts that I did not need or end up actually using. One more thing I wanna cover is going hands-free with the Fogmaster 3.0. It's really great to use it, the hose in your hand and kind of swing it around. It's great for, you know, wafting that fog throughout the room if you want a nice look for a cinematic piece. But if you're trying to use it for product video, which is the case for me, you want it for an effect perhaps. The effect I was using it for in two different videos was one to look like smoke and then two to look like a volcanic activity and if you're anything like me I'm often working a lot by myself to get these product videos made and so it's nice to be hands-free and typically what I'm using to make hands-free solutions is light stands gaff tape rubber bands and clamps a lot of these things I've gotten from dollar store Walmart Home Depot really easy to find these things pretty much anywhere. Now, if you're wanting a more in-depth look at the hands-free method with the Fogmaster 3.0, I actually go deeper into that inside of the paid course, Product Video Pro. It's also worth noting that a lot of behind the scenes shots from these fog machine shoots have actually made it into the 30 minute free training that's on fellowfilmmakercourses.com. Inside the free training, you'll learn the five keys to successful product videos. And I share everything you need to know to get started shooting product videos at home right now. Everything will be linked down in the description for you to find. All in all, I'm actually really happy with the Fogmaster 3.0 and also the Fog Machine as I'm using them a lot in my ad work. Hopefully this has inspired you and just given you some ideas on what to do, what to avoid, and just get started making your own product video stuff. I know the Fogmaster 3.0 is not completely perfect. I will likely iterate it out further, but like I said, you can take it, you can iterate it out and share your findings with me as I like to learn too. So that's it for me. Hope you enjoyed. Comment down below any questions you might have. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you in the next video.